Today, we're testing out the brand new Depth Aware Haze in Photoshop. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. I'm super excited about this because we have a new tool in Photoshop. Always fun when those come about. It's called Depth Aware Haze. It uses AI and processes your image in the cloud, meaning you have to be connected to the internet in order to do this feature. And today we're testing how it works on three different images, trying to throw some curveballs at this new tool. So here's our first photograph from today. You can see our subject is here in the foreground in focus, our background is focus, and we kind of have these stairs that kind of go from in focus to out of focus. So there's a lot of like kind of difficult areas for this tool to work with. So let's go ahead and start off by going to filter. We're going to go to neural filters, which is brand new here in Photoshop. So if you haven't already updated your version of Photoshop, be sure to do so, so you can get access to these neural filters. Now, all of these filters work in the cloud. So again, you have to be connected to the internet in order for these to work. If you turn your Wi-Fi off, it's not going to do anything. So let's go to neural filters here. And as you can see here in our neural filters, it's going to load. This is literally connecting to the cloud. Now, what I'm interested in is this beta filters right over here. So we can see a little uh, beaker here with beta filters. So we're going to go to our beta filters. These are things that are in development, which is super fun. Your version of Photoshop, even as it's released right now, will support these. You don't have to wait for the next version, but they're giving you a little bit of preview of what features are going to be permanently added. So let's go down here to depth aware haze. I'm just going to expand this dialog box just a little bit so you can see depth aware haze. We're just going to go ahead and turn that on. And then I'm going to shrink down our dialog box quite a bit so we can see our settings here with depth aware haze. Now there aren't that many settings, but let's go ahead and just turn it off and on. We have a icon right down here on the bottom where we can preview our changes. So let's just turn that off and back on. And as you can see, it's figuring out where our subject is in this image and adding a haze to the background. Now we have a few options here. We can increase the amount of haze that we decide we want to be more or less hazy in the background. But as you can see, our subject stays very clear. So let's go ahead and zoom in on our subject. We're going to turn this off and on. and It knows where our subject is and is doing a really nice job cutting them out basically all in one, uh, all in one neural filter, which is fantastic. Now we do have a couple of other options here. We have warmth in which we can actually warm up the background and the image as a whole. I found that when it gets like too warm, it kind of turns orangey and starts to not look that realistic. If it tends to get a little bit on the cool side, it tends to look a little cyan and not that realistic. So uh, in my opinion, the warmth feature has a little bit of work that it needs to be worked out, maybe a little bit here, but I would like to see this instead of pushing more towards orange, I'd like to see it pushing a little bit more towards yellow. But again, this feature is in beta. So we're just going to push this up just a little bit. And then we have our brightness, which is surprisingly, you can actually make your image quite a bit darker. And especially in our upcoming example, you can see it does a very good job balancing everything. You can go brighter as well with this haze. Really, I think for my general use, I'm going to keep warmth off and brightness off for now because just this haze does a fantastic job. Look at that. Really, really nice. Now let's take a look at how we're going to output this. So this is one of my favorite features of the tool. Right here at the very bottom, we have output. You can choose from a current layer, duplicate layer, duplicate layer masked that automatically creates your layer mask for you, a new layer or a smart filter, which is a brilliant addition to this tool because that means you didn't have to create a smart object first in order to use this as a smart filter. So this is what I'm going to choose. So smart filter, I recommend 100% of the time. Let's go smart filter and hit OK. Now, because we've applied this as a smart filter, check this out. We can just turn this off or on at any time. And I can even double click here on my neural filters. It's going to load it up and then I can go in here and change any settings. I can increase my amount of haze if I want to do that. Hit OK and it automatically updates my smart filter. So overall impressions, pretty good. Let's go ahead and try to throw a couple curveballs at this tool because it is kind of an automatic tool. Let's see how it does under more difficult circumstances. So our next image is a forest. By the way, you can download all of these sample images on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So 
Basically, with this force, there's no subject, so it can't use the select subject technology. It's gonna try to use what's in focus and out of focus, but most of this image, as you can see, is in focus. So let's see what the tool actually does. We're gonna go to filter, down to neural filters once more, and here we go. Again, you gotta wait on this little loading screen because it's doing everything here in the cloud. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna expand this dialog box out just a little bit. We're gonna turn on our depth aware haze, and then I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back in here to a little bit more of a compact mode. So with our depth aware haze, again, you can click on your little preview button right down here to preview those changes. So we're gonna turn this off and on and get an idea of what it's actually doing here. Like, is it just adding gray to my image? Well, if I zoom in here, let's go ahead and turn that back on, you can see it actually is doing a pretty good job masking out some of these trees. If I increase my haze, you can see some of these trees don't get this haze applied. And here in our background, we actually have quite a bit more haze applied as well. So it really is using the in-focus areas to determine what actually gets this haze effect and what does not. And I gotta say, the results look really good. Turning this off and on, I would be totally happy with this in one of my photos. It really does look as though the image gets hazier as it gets farther away. Based on the fact that, you know, it's just using AI to calculate this, I think it's doing a really good job. Now, in this image in particular, I did find that I actually liked when I brought the brightness up a little bit, kind of like makes it more like a bright, sunny day with a little bit of haze, which is cool. Bringing the brightness down, you can see we have like a really moody type photo as well. So if you did this and then maybe brought your saturation down, it could create us some really interesting looks to your photos with really just a click. So let's go ahead and turn that off again. I'm gonna go ahead and go down here to Smart Filter. Let's just bring this dialog box up so we can see everything. I'm gonna I'll put this to a Smart Filter and hit OK. So again, when there's no subjects at all in the image, again, it does really well. All right, it's time for our third, and this time it's our most challenging image. We're throwing out this new neural filter. So here's our third image. It's a bit challenging for this filter, and here are the reasons why. The filter uses the select subject technology as well as depth sensing technology to figure out what should and should not be hazy. Now, select subject, it's gonna do okay. It's gonna recognize the person's face, but all this other stuff, like most people don't have giant birds <laughs> coming from their hand, and most people uh, and most pictures aren't standing on horses as well. So there's kind of a lot of curveballs going on here. So let's go ahead and see how the technology does. We're gonna go to filter and then down to neural filters again. And let's go ahead and just spread this out. So we have our, again, we wanna to go to our beta filters and then we're gonna turn on our depth aware haze. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring this right back in here so we can kind of get a little bit of a smaller preview. So with depth aware haze, again, turning this off and on, it did a pretty good job with my person, right? Like it sensed that, hey, there's a face there and it's not including the haze really around the person's face. But all this other stuff, it kind of didn't know what to do with. The horse is okay, because I guess the horse isn't the focus, but the bird here, as we can see turning this off and on, the bird is definitely considered uh, a background element. It's getting a lot of haze on the bird, which you wouldn't actually want, okay? So this is one example where it's like, okay, maybe this isn't exactly what we want from this filter. Uh, I would love a little bit of a feature in here, uh, kind of like the quick selection tool to be able to just kind of draw on, you know, if there was an option here to like draw what you do and do not want to be included, that'd be great. Cause then I could just go ahead and choose, hey, make sure to not include this bird. But there is a workaround. So if this feature doesn't work exactly how you want, what we can do is go to our output settings, okay? And I'm gonna go to duplicate layer masked. Hit okay. So after we hit okay, you can see we have a new layer with a layer mask. But the cool thing about this is you can still go in here and edit this. So I'm gonna use Photoshop's select subject to see if it can get a better grasp of what's, my, what's actually going on and select my subject. I'm gonna turn this layer off temporarily. Go ahead and click on my background and we're gonna go to select and then down here to select subject. There we go. Now, select subject basically tries to figure out, again, what's in focus, and it tries to recognize faces and things like that. And you can see it's done a pretty good job here. So with selection still active, I'm gonna click here on my layer and then just use my brush tool and paint black on my layer mask. Now, I'm gonna hit Control or Command H. 
That's just going to hide my selection temporarily. I'm going to still be able to paint, but Controller Command H just hides it so I can see what I'm doing. So Controller Command H, and I'm just going to paint black on my layer mask, and look at that. I'm just painting away. Because I have that select subject still active, I'm painting away this effect on the bird. So even though the tool didn't work perfectly straight out of the box, I was still able to go in here and work on my layer mask and any areas that I thought should or should not be masked out, I was able to do that manually and that really didn't take that long. So my impressions, I think this new depth aware haze is an awesome addition to Photoshop. These neural filters that send your images to the cloud and then use AI to process them and send them back, that is nuts and I don't understand it at all, but it works really well. I do wish they would change the colors for the warmth. The warm tends to be a little bit on the orange, the cool is a little bit on the cyan. I'd like to see those colors tweaked a little bit more. I think it'd be more useful in more use cases. And the lightness is pretty good, but I don't see myself using it that much. I would like to see a little bit of more control within the filter itself. Just a tool like the quick selection tool to be able to simply paint over the object that I did or did not want to include in this filter. But again, as we've shown, because it gives you all those great output settings, you can then always just transfer this as a layer mask, do a select subject, and you're good to go. Let me know what you guys think of these new neural filters using AI in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you so much. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone.